Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I am going to be discussing my Holy Grail Cool Toned Makeup Products. I did a video similar to this about a year and a half to two years ago and I figured it was time to update, mainly because the products I mentioned in that video are no longer things I really even use anymore. I feel like this video is important in terms of makeup use slash artistry uh, because when I was first dabbling into the world of makeup and I got to cool tones I was like okay well I have these five taupes to pick from or these five dusty grays to pick from like I didn't realize there was a lot of dimension in the term cool toned that it was like a set of specific colors but there's quite a few different uh, ways you can wear them quite a few tones you can pick from so I figured I would gather up all of my favorite things and just vomit, word vomit them, I wouldn't throw up on you, let me rephrase. I would just share them with you guys uh, in hopes that it helps you out, you know? But yeah, that's that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. Let's begin. So to switch it up, I'm going to begin with some face products. The first is the Dandelion Blush from Benefit Cosmetics. This is the perfect baby pink with the slightest hint of peach, just that slight, slight touch of warmth that makes it super flattering. I find a lot of times if blushes are, this is so awkward to hold, I have like a claw happening. If blushes are too cool toned, they can pull too gray on the skin, especially the tanner and deeper you get. So having that hint of peach really helps to keep it nice and wearable and not something that's going to make you look a little bit dead. Glossier Cloud Paint in the shade Puff. I'm addicted. I use this on the cheeks, use it on the lids, the lips, it really works anywhere. It dries down very lightweight on the skin, does not stay greasy, doesn't stay sticky, but it's still very hydrating so it's very comfortable to wear on different parts of the face. Because of that it's just so easy to use if you're wanting to look put together, run out the door without having to spend too much time on your makeup. This shade is a really pretty neutral baby kind of candy pink and I find that it looks beautiful on a wide range of different skin tones. It's not one of those blushes like Dandelion that kind of has a limit to how many skin tones it will work on. All of the Glossier cloud, pa cloud paints really translate well across the spectrum. This one's a little bit more on the neutral side, but it's the coolest tone bronzer that I currently own and it is Ciate Star Island. I received this about a month and a half ago and I have used it almost every day since receiving it. I like this because instead of leaning very warm, very red, it leans a very neutral, slight yellowy tint. It's not overly orange. A lot of bronzers are so orange. For example, Matte Give Me Sun is just a straight up tangerine, like a light terracotta tangerine. I love it in the summer, but I know like that's a very limited shade. Not everyone can dip into that, whereas the Ciate one still has that hint of warmth, but it's still cool toned enough that you can throw it on just to define your face if you don't feel like going full bronze, you know? This one is a bit of oh, a hefty splurge, but you're getting a lot for what you pay for. It's the Contour Book Volume 2 by Kevin and Kwan. I really just am loving how cool toned this entire thing is. I've been using this a lot recently. I'm wearing it all today on the face. I really feel like these are some of the best powders I have ever used. Honestly, to the point where I'm like, this is a bit too intense for a face powder because truly you just barely tap your brush into it and that is too much. Like it can be entirely too much so you have to be very delicate and gentle with it. So when I noticed that I was like, okay, this was definitely worth the splurge. I'm not having to like swirl around, tap off a lot of excess. It's really just for very minute, minuscule use. The creams in this are very lightweight, but so pigmented. When you blend them out, they don't lose any of that pigmentation. They don't get streaky. They don't lift up your foundation. They just blend, blend nicely. They dry down to a very powdery feel. Don't fade throughout the day. I feel like this is such a great all-in-one product. Overall, grade A. If you have been considering picking anything up by Kevin Aquan, I think that palette is a great starting point because you get a good feel for how his powders and creams really work. Moving into illuminators, let me tell you, it was so hard to narrow this section into just three because there are so many that I love, but as of late, these are the three that I have been using the most. First step is the Extra Dimension Skin Finish in the shade Soft Frost. This is such a cool shade. It's a baby violet lavender blue shift. It uh, isn't a white base, but I will say the white base doesn't show up heavily. When I usually dip into illuminators that have a white base like this, you can just see like a chalkiness here, but this one's pretty invisible until the light hits it. Just such a cool color. I find that you can really make it subtle, so that's just a slight glint of iciness when the sun or whatever light hits it, or you can really amp it up to have it be the focal point of your look. And the best part, in my opinion, is that it does not really get 
powdery or chunky or textury up on the high points of the face. The NYX Duo Chromatic Illuminating Powder in the shade Lavender Steel is one of my daily go-tos. This one is more of a very cool baby pink shift. Again, the base looks scary. It looks like it's going to deposit down like an eyeshadow, just that big bar of pigment, but it's really quite invisible until the light hits it. It is so intense, so right out of the gate. I love that it's just that beautiful pink shift. Reminds me a lot of that one by Pat McGrath, which is super intense, also super affordable. And lastly, the Maybelline Master Strobing Liquid in the shade 100. This is probably my favorite creamy liquid, because it's not quite a cream, it's not quite a liquid highlighter ever. I don't like any other similar highlighter better than this one and this one is so affordable so it just makes it that much better to me. Uh, this one is very silvery but to be ultra redundant it's kind of invisible until the light hits it. Anyway this one's super nice because it doesn't have any glitter in it. It's just a soft beautiful metallic reflect. It does not lift up your foundation. It's not chunky. It's not hard to blend. It blends out great with a brush or a finger. I just have not found a con with this yet. I feel like I've used quite a lot of it, but uh, yeah, highly, highly recommend. Probably one of the best creamy liquid uh, highlighters at the drugstore at this time. Moving into eyeshadow, I have one palette I swear by for cool tones, and that is the Tardis Pro Palette. I recall this having a lot of mixed reviews, but in my opinion, it's just phenomenal. As you can see on the screen, it's mostly cool tones. There are some warm and neutrals mixed in, but for the most part, you get a lot of cool tones to play with here, a lot of dimension in cool tones, which, in my opinion, makes it a really great starting palette for those of you who maybe don't know where to begin with cool tones. I know they can be intimidating in the sense that if you wear too many cool things on the face at once, it can pull a bit gray. But because there's some pinks in here, there is that slight pop of warmth in, warmth in here. If you need it, it definitely makes it uh, more user friendly. I tend to use this palette by row. So as you can see the bottom, I would say is the most neutral row. Just looking at the mattes here, uh, has some blues, some tans. This is where things start to get more cool toned. You have these fuchsias here, this lavender and this taupe. And then this is like the ultimate cool toned row. I feel like it's very user friendly because there is a slight warmth to them, but not so much that it's going to overpower your look and make you look like you're wearing like rich bright purples or warm pinks or anything like that. Just perfectly neutral. Last up is some lip products. I was so excited about this part of the video. I had started out with like 15 and I was like, we need to get this down to five, Mariah. So I have five in front of me. These are the ones that I wear the most. Uh, I'm very particular about what I need in a cool tone lip product uh, that I'm going to wear often. have lots of different cool tone colors, but the ones I wear often have to be very flattering, so these are probably all shades that you guys will enjoy, will like, and will find pretty wearable. The first I have in front of me here is Radish by Bite Beauty. This is the color of a radish. It's a very pretty, rich, cool toned, mid-toned uh, fuchsia slash magenta. I feel like this is perfect for those of you who kind of are tired of wearing like the bright orange or the bright red during the summer. Bite Beauty's consistency and quality just blow everyone else out of the water. I feel like one swipe of this and you're done. You can blot it down into a stain as well. I personally have been loving to apply this and then feather it out so that it looks like a really soft kind of kissed lip. I'm kind of over a lot of structure in my makeup lately. Like this is the most structured I've been as of late and I don't know, I just feel like the feathered kissed lip look is really cute and really youthful. Next we have Driftwood by MAC. This is the shade I'm wearing today. This is a bit more of a dead nude. It's very gray based but it still has that kiss of almost a slight peachiness mixed with a slight lavender. It makes my teeth look super white, uh, which I much appreciate, and also has a really nice, healthy, kind of semi-gloss finish to it. Very comfortable, slightly sticky though, uh, but other than that, really great. It's a one and done kind of product, not quite as pigmented as the Bite, but definitely much more pigmented than the usual MAC lipstick. NYX Intense Butter Gloss in the shade Cookie Butter is a very difficult shade to pull off, but one that I enjoy wearing. It's a very neutral, almost yellowy gray based nude. I feel like this looks really, really pretty when I have red on the eyes and I want just the lips to be washed out but still defined, still part of the look. This is what I will put on. I also love to wear this as more of a sheared out gloss, so I'll tend to apply it to the finger, kind of pat it all over the lips just to neutralize them a bit, but again, keep them as part of the look. I feel like it's a really great lip gloss uh, specifically for that kind of 
You know when you want concealer lips, but you don't want your lips to look like they disappeared, then definitely you can you can reach for this baby. Jouer Muir liquid lipstick is the prettiest, fl most flattering kind of baby slash unicorny purple. Uh, it's not too white based, so it's not going to look chalky on the lips. I find that it looks very healthy despite being so almost pastel and because of that I feel like it'll look good on a wide range of skin tones a lot of the time with more pastel shades they are very white based and a lot of them do tend to look chalky even on me but this one I feel is more of just a lighter toned berry shade so I find it to be super flattering it goes with a lot of different tones on the eyes I love pairing it with green on the eyes I feel like it really makes the green pop something about the uh, purple green on the color spectrum they just, they complement each other. Last up, we have Manila by Ofra. This is a new favorite of mine, uh, new as in in the last three or so weeks. I've been wearing this and I was like, holy shit, I love this. Be on my lips all the time. It's a really neutral, dusty, uh, I want to say grayish peach. It has like a slight peach vibe to it. Uh, on me, it looks very, you know, muted, but I feel like the paler you go, it's really going to help pick up that peachy undertone and not look so grayed out. I have a really strong yellow undertone in my skin, so shades like this really look dusty on me, and that's why I love it. It's very dusty, but it still has that slight hint of warmth. This is another one of the shades that just works with any eye look, I mean anything, because it has that kind of teeters the line of neutral and cool. It really just flatters anything you have on the cheeks or eyes. All right, so that wraps up today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know your favorite cool tone products in the comments below. We can have a little discussion. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I'll chat with you in my next video.